I want to keep abreast of the news, and this is something that went down this week. Is f- you, Gizmodo? <laughs> you 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 want you want to sign up for our newsletter, Ben? Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Mobile Ben here at LGC Actual Switch in the bits doing the nightmare fuel that man to my right. 506 episodes, kids. Still can't figure out the video thing. <laughs> that is Jordan Swan. And to his right. <laughs> no! <laughs> Stop. Is one Pedro Mateus. And together with you Hello. watching this live on Twitch, help it is for right button. Cocaine, Voltron. Easy peasy, easy to remember. Not affiliated with drugs. But you better ban. It's two canes that two we're canes. very, very, in, the, very much into uh, walking implements. Indeed. The game we're throwing chairs at this week, very much brought to you by drugs. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for that, because every now and then, we sort through a lot of bullshit. We do, when it comes to games. But this is how you find the good ones. You got to give them mm-hmm. a fair shake, because you never know. Like the one we're playing this week, I looked at it, like right when I was sitting I'm like, oh, lovely, another hipster pixel top down. Turns out, it's pretty good. But yeah. before we get started, we want to play a little bit of catch up, a little bit of uh, PSA stuff. I've already been asked this couple of times in email and now on Twitter, like what happened to our Spotify feeds? I had to reset them because we are now delivering video on Spotify. Oh, very nice. (laughs) So if you open up Linux Gamecast and Spotify and you click play, and if you want, you'll see us and you can run screeching into terror. I would like to (laughs) thank Jordan for filling in uh, for weekly daily Tuesday which was our, that was our first episode of uh, LWDW with video on Spotify. You, you you mentioned Spotify's giving us another thing after, after we were done recording. What? The the, the, the mailboxes. Oh, the, right. Yeah, that uh, also there might be an option to send us voicemails directly from the app. Oh, boy. That's, that's going to be terrible. It's probably going to be a bad idea. <laughs> That doesn't sound right for abuse or anything. Probably not. <laughs> Tried a couple of new things on top of everything else, but uh, I got Reaper doing some special stuff with some AV sync, just testing. I'm just saying that just in case, mainly for our live viewers, if things just explode. But yeah, that's pretty. Oh, pro tip. Here's your free PSA, everyone. Make sure if you're going to buy. That was loud. Uh, if you're going to buy a display port cable that looks exactly like, and from the same company, from the same braided color matching as your USB C3, USB C cable, make sure it doesn't lock. Because when you're getting ready to pull the PC out and you look down, you're like, yeah, it's a USB cable, and you yank it, and you have that moment of terror where you realize, <laughs> I just got that 3060 after waiting for 10 months. Did I just destroy it? It didn't have a lock on it. So we had that moment. Not proud of myself, but hey. How about you, Jordan? How about you, man? I, What's up? I, I spent three hours on Monday projectile vomiting. That's that's how I spent my early part of the week. Uh yeah, so that that, that was that was good stuff. Like Ben said, I showed up on uh, Wednesday to cover for Jill. Uh yeah, no, it was very, very boring week. Lots of lots of work stuff. I've I, if you're if you're if you're following from Thursday, I did pay my taxes on time. You got that done. I got that done. I adulted. Oh, man. I, I would add that. Oh, it would have been too tempting to call the tax game. I'd be like, hey, uh, man. Dude, <laughs> dude the, the, the fucking turnaround if you file digitally in Canada is really fast. I got my assessment notice like five minutes after I submitted. It was really good. Oh, nice. Yeah, like they have they have a pretty. But, you know, you know, you know, uh, I was talking about this with Lonnie. Um, of course, the government wants to put as few barriers as possible between you, you and your money. So absolutely, yeah, they're going to make think. it. That's not they're, they're, true for all countries. <laughs> they're they're, they're going to. Yeah, they're, they're, they have an incentive to make it as easy as possible to pay them and find out how much money you owe them. So, yeah, surprise. <laughs> Pedro, you have uh, improved your memory. I have, uh, I have, well, it still goes away if I, uh, you know, shut down for too long, but yes, I have 32 gigs of uh, DDR4 uh, 3600, which now is even faster because I got the um, 
the CL16 one, I had uh, the previous one that I had was just 16 gigabytes, 3600, but it was CL18. So, yes, it, it, it's more and better, faster, RAM. R- 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 Harder, <laughs> better, faster, stronger. Yes. <laughs> I think we could say this one thing, though, man. Um, out of everything, memory stayed kind of reasonable through all yeah, this remember, nonsense. Yeah. For, for a while, memory was kind of up there. It, it came it down up a for little bit. It, it, it came down a little bit, but it's still, it's still a little pricier than I'd like to pay for it. But, you know, I, I also don't need to buy a new RAM. So it was 150 well. pounds for the 32 gigs, which is like half of what it was uh, yeah. about yeah, two that, years that, ago. So that's pretty good. That, yeah, that's, that, that's like $700 Canadian, man. Like, oh, man. You, 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 know, you know how it is. Oh, but hey, that's why we keep a swap file on the horse, baby. <laughs> yeah, because it it, 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 run, it has very, very slow memory, and it runs on a spinning disc, which is weird because it's made out of goo. It's the Steam Linux of the so we we got some new goo for the uh, Steam Deck, eh? Don't we, man? We got Steam Deck client and OS update. We're talking not one, not oh, two, yeah. but multiple things like lock screens, power improvements, and more. But you know what? I, I'm really happy to see this because they've added a little thing that will let you know that your charger sucks. Do for <laughs> Yep. Um, it, it just will, which I think, I, honestly, I think that's pretty cool. Also, localized keyboards. For 21 different layouts. That's pretty neat. And Jordan, you brought up a thing with the SD cards, right? Yeah. So there, there's a problem where if you go buy some SD cards off Amazon, sometimes they mm-hmm. don't actually have the amount of storage they say they do on the label uh, or in, in the allocation table. So yeah, the uh, Steam Deck now has a little check to see if your SD card is like, is what it says it is. Uh, and we'll, yeah, which, which, which is good. Yeah. I like that, but I want to, like, if you pop it in and it runs it and it detects it and it's great, it should say excellent, all of Bill and Ted, in the same way if you plop, plop it in, you oh, get the yes. bogus. <laughs> yeah. but I'm, I'm sure Keanu's down for that. Probably would do it. Yeah. Uh, the, the lock screen is nice, though. Now no one can, like, snoop on your hentai games on the bus. Until your drunk ass <laughs> sets it one night. <laughs> Well, well, there's a way around 60, it there, there's a little option in the corner it's like I forgot my thing <laughs> then it's going to ask you to give your verification code from your Steam Deck yeah right. you have to type in your Steam password that, that's basically it uh, all right. <laughs> I would, well, it would be kind of neat if they had like a thing in the authenticator app just to be like yeah unlock my uh, that would require them updating the authenticator app shut yeah. up then <laughs> they'll do it eventually if you complain <laughs> enough well you know what in all fairness they're going to have to update is there one on Apple I, yeah, uh, the yeah the Steam app. I think so. Should be. Yeah, for, for the for the is. authenticator yeah. and the yeah. We well, saw the thing I that was. Apple has like rolled out. And they're like, "Yo, you need to update your stuff every two years, or we're delisting you from the uh, <laughs> store." Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that's that's kind of poo poo. But <laughs> hey, man, you might might get a new Steam app. <laughs> Maybe it could be. At Valve loves iOS. it when companies force them to do things. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what? Maybe, 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 maybe if Epic Games should register for a new iTunes account and <laughs> put, sub, sub, submit a new app called Gork Knife. That, yeah, that submit the, the uh, totally real engine. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, it, it, you just move everything up a le- letter. It, 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 it's Fepic Games and Gork Knight. <laughs> oh, man. Pedro, why shouldn't we update from the desktop, though, man? Yeah, no, as it turns out, if you're using the desktop mode in the Steam Deck, don't do the firmware updates from the desktop client. Apparently, there's a bit of a disconnect between the desktop client and the actual deck UI client, because, uh, yeah, it, it... people were having issues and Valve said, okay, if you did that and now you're stuck in a boot loop, time to download the recovery image and flash that. But yeah, this this round of updates is what was in beta, which uh, I'm very, very thankful that they actually fixed the uh, issues that it was causing with my deck, which caused that half the games just wouldn't launch. But uh, the new beta... That's the interesting one. Yes. <laughs> it has some very, very nice things, including um, setting your screen refresh rate anywhere between 60 and 40 hertz. Yes, literally all the hertz in between. You can set your screen refresh rate to 53 hertz if you... 
For some reason, uh, you, you, you like minute, that. Wait a minute, Pedro. So if I do it real quick, I can pretend I have variable refresh, right? Yes. What about the Hertz, though? What about the Hertz donut? Doesn't support that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about the Hertz donut, but I do know that uh, it lets you uh, basically <laughs> the you frame read limiter. The update, Jordan. They said they enabled <laughs> Windows 11. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, but, there's uh, DPM, sh- yes. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, the uh, the the actual frame limiter now uh, just interprets the ratio from whatever uh, the refresh rate was. So if you had it set to limit to 30, when you lower it to 40 now, you'll actually see that it's limiting it to 20. So you can play Avengers at the <laughs> native uh, frame rate. It, it's amazing. And uh, they... What, 20, 23 frames a second? <laughs> 20. <laughs> it was locked to 20. And uh, yeah, the... Um, they fixed the introduction of the euro sign. Apparently, a bunch of the uh, euro keyboard layouts, which were introduced with the regular update, uh, were having issues with the euro symbol. So now you can talk euros with the rest of the EU peeps, not not UK peeps. Uh, and um, go ahead. So I I was just going to ask uh, because because you know if you, if you did update the client from the desktop, you are in uh, Fuxord land. Can you launch the recovery off of an SD card, or do you need a USB dongle to like plug in a flash drive? Depends on the US, uh, on the SD card because the BIOS on the Steam Deck is very very small uh, in the kind of uh, hardware that it supports, and mm. some SD cards it just doesn't like and it doesn't boot from them. Okay, but yeah, some will work, others will not. So kind of the moral from that is that twenty pack from Amazon. Yeah, yeah focus, <laughs> focus, <laughs> focus. Twenty times, baby. All right, um, roguelites. Apparently, yeah. sales are coming. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Steam has these festivals coming out, and uh, you you like RNG heavy, procedurally generated games. You Love like ultra, it. Uh, like ultra grim dark fantasy games where you roll around a bunch until you get netted. Does the phrase rinse and repeat tickle your pickle? Well, the Going Rogue Fest highlights a bunch of current new roguelike, souls-like, rogue souls, and like-likes for your perusal. Um, it's a pretty popular genre um, for obvious reasons. Um, from a game development perspective, doing rogue-style games means you don't have to actually worry about the level creation aspect of it, and you can just write a subsystem for it. Uh, souls-likes are all the rage these days. People like playing them with their Donkey Kong Congos Look and, at their, this list and, their, of and their full controllers. <laughs> yeah, and the, 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 the article the article explains what the hell all this is, what what a rogue like is, what a souls like is. I I I I played like OG Rogue on on my laptop because that that was in the Fedora repo. Um, so I'm I'm, mm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put on I'm gonna get my my old man pants and hike them up until get get off my lawn. But yeah, uh, no, if 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 you like that, there's gonna be a lot of uh, demos um, out as well as new games going on sale to uh, tickle your RNG pickle. Yeah, no, uh, I, I like that Strider earlier in the week who was uh, telling people that uh, I made up the term roguelite and uh, <laughs> on the very same day, Valve puts up the uh, article explaining like what a roguelike is, what a roguelite is, <clears throat> and of course the Pedro, the, the obvious the answer is that you stole it from Valve. <laughs> That's the thing. The term roguelite, uh, I think the first time I saw it was uh, Rogue Legacy. The uh, seller, seller Door Games, they were the ones that described Rogue Legacy as a roguelite. So, okay. All right. I, 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 have, <laughs> I have an entirely unrelated thought. If, if does, does the existence of Crystal Light imply the existence of Crystal Heavy? Is that just meth? I mean... <laughs> uh, see, are you putting an H after the C? Well, and is it a, my, an my is like in y? what radius to a Disney World are we talking about? A <laughs> uh, pie. That, that, that's the radius. I'm really glad to see this though, because what I think about it's not my gem, but I'm going to try all this. Why? Because back in the NES ages, you know, I enjoyed Metroid. I enjoyed Castlevania. Just there was too that fusion, a little too spicy for me, but. I always want to run into one like I want to get hung up on a game like uh, Pedro is on Dark Souls. You just get, like I guess that was Hollow Knight for you for a while. You were just getting you were getting lost in there, right? Like, Metroid, yeah, yeah, 100%. Metroid, yeah. Metroid, yeah. Metroid, yeah. Metroid, yeah. 
But yeah, no, I like that Valve is actually explaining this to people because, as it turns out, the uh, the Steam Deck uh, drummed up a lot of interest in Japan, go figure. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, Japanese peeps who were never exposed to the roguelike genre at all because PC gaming wasn't really a thing for them. So that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Speaking of things that make perfect sense. Um, Steam is now on the Snap Store. Oh, snap. And you can help <laughs> test it. Oh, following an announcement at last, Canonical says, going all in to improve Linux gaming on Ubuntu, which is good. As part of that effort, they want to simplify and smooth out the bumps currently involved in getting a gaming setup up and running on the Ubuntus. And atop their list is bringing Steam to the Snap Store. Uh, it's going to be packaged by Canonical, not Valve. No word on whether yeah, Valve's already like, we use Arch now. Um, Hey, hey, Canonical, remember when you said you were getting rid of 32-bit and we said bye and move to Arch? Peace. Yeah. <laughs> um, They're long gone okay. now. <laughs> uh, this is early access, and so expect bugs and gaps in features, integration, performance. And this is from Ken, and he adds that his team will iterate quickly to fix anything that comes up. And it goes on in a little bit more detail. But one thing says, uh, you know, this is from Ong Ubuntu. All this is going to be in our show notes. To quote this, uh, Canonical has also revealed it's hiring an entire team dedicated to improving the gaming experience on Ubuntu. To which I'll retort, are you? Really? Yeah, it's a shame they turned away all of those like very qualified, highly passionate candidates who would have really uh, were driven this initiative to like a, a material conclusion. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I get so from Val's perspective. I mean, they don't really care, right? They don't mm. want any barriers. Much, much, much like the Canadian government, they don't want any barriers between you and your wallet. Yeah, or Val's been like really, really chill, but like, yeah, distribute it however you want. Because you remember yeah. that was an issue back in the day. People mm-hmm. were scared to include the. And I was like, yeah. whatever. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the the one thing that interests me is you know, pr- uh, Snap is a containerized solution. Steam uses Pressure Vessel, which is Flatpak esque. Uh, I wonder how those two interact and what's the what's what's the what's the performance what are going to be some of those uh <laughs> those difficulties that come up i mean if you tried launching a game in proton you notice that it takes a while sometimes uh and then when you try to launch a snap you notice that it takes a while sometimes now i don't, I don't know I've, I've never launched a snap I, I've, I've never i don't know stuff. <laughs> you launched the flat pack you got the taste <laughs> yeah yep. yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, it is yeah. Uh, the thing that got me in this article was like the very first like uh, thing, which was uh, following an announcement. Uh, Canonical says it's going all in to improve the Linux gaming on Ubuntu. As part of that effort, they want to simplify and smooth out the bumps currently involved in getting a gaming setup on Ubuntu. You know, let's introduce Steam as a snap, which not only will it run worse, it will actively slow down the boot of your computer because if you have multiple snaps installed your computer is probably taking about 10 20 30 seconds longer to boot than if it didn't this is is why you didn't get hired because you don't understand the snap story there clearly it's it's, it's secure it's 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 better you guys absolutely Uh, i i I gotta look at it from (laughs) devil's advocate here i go defending snaps Uh, okay let's hear it the As if you're going to be inside the canonical e- ecosystems, the Ubuntu ecosystem, you know, I understand what they're trying to do. Just, let's snap what we can. We were talking about in the pre pre super shows and like um, snaps makes sense. Well, the best case for snaps is, you know, IOT server side desktop containerization. But if that's the road that they're going, at least have everything lined up. So you're not dealing with half apt, half snaps, just have it there, like click it. And if they're going to maintain it and they're going to make it run, I, I don't have a problem with it. Like, I'm not going to use it, but yeah, uh, I mean, as long as long as like you know, we were. I'm talking just thinking about for like, Thursday, the new, like I'm thinking about the new user, and we are very far removed from that. We forget that a lot of times. Uh, you know, that first like just launching up. Oh, install the Steam. I just click that, and from the development side, we can guarantee that they're going to have everything that they need for Steam out of the box. There it is. And I mean, like, you can always go to the Steam website, download the dev. And I'm sure, like, uh, we talked about on Thursday with the, with the Firefox stuff, there's going to be some PPA that um, will allow you to install. Yes, yeah, so someone old, in the community Steam. will uh, actually package it properly. Or you can be like me last time I rebuilt the uh, Threadripper in here. I mean, rarely 
install Steam like between unless you're constantly nuking and paving. And on Debian, here's a it's like, where's why can't I? Where's the Steam? I know the Steam package, and this was 30 minutes later. I'm like, right, I need to go edit my apps and add non dash free to this because it's Debian. But simplifying things like that, I installed the flat pack. I'm like, that works, but it was kind of early days back then. So, uh, hey, hey, if they want to do this, I would like to see them get, uh, you know, a focused gaming initiative, but I don't know who that's going to be because out of the people I do know and people we've made friends with over the last decade, ain't none of them. Yep. No. Um, mm-hmm. A and couple other people outside, outside our circle spoke up and they said they didn't apply, didn't even get the job either. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to worry about that because Jordan posted earlier this week and he's like, put it. In mine veins. Yeah. Uh, so I, w- I, w- I was derping around YouTube listening to some gaming crap. You know, it's the, 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 the eternal auto net autoplay. And I saw this thing. I'm like, this looks suspiciously like FTL. Uh, this is a Trigon, a space story. It came out this week, actually. Uh, and yeah, it is, it is 3D ass FTL. It looks very, very nice. It runs a little bit like poop on my 1080 Ti, but. Yeah, it's basically FTL with the serial numbers filed off. The battles are a lot more intense. This game does not fuck around the way FTL <laughs> kind of does in the early game. Uh, and there, there, there are so it's it, it's sort of like um, go, going from like Back for Blood to Left for Dead, right? Like same core system, but like different set of priorities. Um, and and so like uh, there's a lot more like character management. Characters have like abilities now. Um, the game actually wants you to retreat, which is kind of a, a weird one. But yeah. I'm 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 certainly into it. I'll definitely be playing more of it. I I downloaded I bought it. I downloaded it to uh, play it, and I pumped, pumped my head up like 45 minutes later. Like, oh, okay, well, that was fun. <laughs> there is a demo for it. That's what I was like. You know what? I'll go try this because you know, FTL is not my thing. I see it's got mixed reviews. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm I'm curious. I gotta. What, what are the what What are the popular negative? Game needs a massive balance overall. Oh, get good scrub. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it's it's fucking hard. It, it it kicked my ass. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know enough about this type of game. That's why I was throwing it to Jordan uh, to comment on it. Other than um, I'm I love seeing demos. We're getting more yep. and more of those. Let's bring that back. That is great. You know, or if it's time demo, or de- I know it's extra work, but it's still brilliant. It makes me happy to see him. And uh, you can die in the tutorial in this game. Ask me how I know, baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, you were reading the reviews and you didn't actually read the interesting one, which is FTL but less interesting. And then the person goes, this is infuriating on many levels because apparently if one specific dude dies, your ship blows up. Yes, and he's like, that, that, I have... That is one thing that bugs me about that. Yeah, that you you have a captain, and if the captain dies, then the 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 mission is scrubbed. Where in FTL, you could just be like, okay, look look at you, you're, you're the captain. You got promoted, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Then the person who wrote the review is like, I have to put up with this uh, nonsense from executives in my day job. I don't need the bullshit in my video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, th- I think I'm definitely going to be trying. I'm going to be streaming some of it on uh, this coming Thursday. So uh, if you want to see what happens, uh, uh, check it out. You know, uh, 2.5D FTL. Yeah. I mean, yeah. How about? Yep. <laughs> how about um, we slower, revisit slower than something? Light. Well, an ultra deluxe, a blast from the past, something, a game that my shining moment from this game was, well, the original is legitimately earning the achievement yes me <laughs> and icky ryan c we both had that back and forth about like okay let's not fast forward time and we waited what was it five years or seven five years, years five years yeah, yeah. <laughs> the I, go I, outside I inst- achievement <laughs> yeah I, I installed it today just to get that i'm like oh yeah i should do that <laughs> yeah so. and uh, it does work because yeah if you did wait for that long and then launch the game it very much gives you the achievement, but hey, now's a chance to start it up again, or maybe buy the new version, the Ultra Deluxe, as uh, Evan was hinting at. It is, uh, it's more a uh, Stanley Parable. It is <laughs> <not> Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> it is, uh, it's like they took the already fairly, um, 
uh, self and I want that motivational poster. Yeah, <laughs> a guy with knives in his back getting yeah, kicked off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the, the the best way is if you played super liminal uh, but never played the Stanley Parable, imagine what super liminal does with its mechanics, but doing that with the narrative of the game instead. Not just the plot narrative that you're given by the developers, but the one that you yourself input with your own agency as a player. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, it's, it's, it's the game is a war between you and the narrator. Absolutely. It's amazing. It is uh, actually one of the games that I will unashamedly admit that I played for the story. I'm very much a mechanics first type of person, but the story here is good. And I tried, I tried to be cleverer than the uh, developers and do like the portal, find the cake, run and get out of the map and go to places you're not supposed to be. And the game actually let me believe that I had succeeded uh -huh. for a good 30 minutes. And then the narrator comes back. It's like, Stanley. Oh, shit, they planned for this. Fuck. <laughs> the only thing I hope, one thing I do want to say about this is hopefully it's a bit longer than the original because, I mean, it only had about, you know, I finished the game in about 10, 15 minutes and I felt like I could get a little bit more for my money this time, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Well, uh, There's so many different endings, so much stuff you can do. It's dude, oh, oh, knowing yeah, oh, it's that this is, knowing that it's Stanley <laughs> Parable, I fully expect like the first thing I'm going to do is like, what's the file size on this? Because I'm expecting some frog fraction level type <laughs> nonsense. They did say they're updating it though, and it does have a native Linux version. Do you think we're getting the native VKD3D or a, a DXVK with uh, with this? I don't know. DXVK native, probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I guess it might depend on whatever Unity farts out these days. But well, no, it, uh, the the original game was uh, Source. Source. Oh, it was done yeah. in Source. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I don't know. Probably shrug emoji. That one. Yeah. Man. Maybe. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the source emoji. games have DXVK native, so. Uh, yep. <laughs> good enough. Good enough. Good to see. All right. Well, coming up next, Twitch cuts like a knife, and we get to smash. <laughs> Twitch cuts like a knife. And if um, you're wondering what the uh, Linux game cast uh, music. Video. video clip would look like screaming well, probably screaming a lot non -stop. <laughs> Spotify a wants lot of us this. to make a trailer intro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is something that we're open to your uh, contributions as well for not just for that but for that like warmers, yeah. oh, join man. the layer like warmers, <laughs> dude. We, we gotta put, put that on the Amazon wish zone. But yeah, if you want to fund the Linux Gamecast music video, where I guess we're just doing a shot for shot remake of Gay Bar. I think I think that sounds about right. Down. Uh, yeah, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash game uh, slash Linux Game Cast. Become a become a patreon.com slash you. I want to take you to a gay bar. No, um, patreon.com slash Linux Game Cast. Become a Patreon. Get some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel. You can get that from by uh, subbing to us on Twitch as well. We got to thank uh, all twelve gamer for uh, subbing to us on Twitch for uh, three months. So thanks for X three, X three. Yeah, that's a game. Uh, that's a game series that's got like a massive following that it's going to get into. Oh yeah, because it's 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 four X, right? Like yeah. Uh, yeah, or or the or the third triple X movie where they got Vin Diesel back because no one wanted to see Ice Cube. I think <laughs> that, that that was the one. Anyways, uh, let let's not talk about crappy Vin Diesel movies yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, becoming a patron gets you some cool stuff as well. Uh, access to Discord, early show note access. If you're a uh, Death Note or above, you get your name in the credits. You get a uh, video feed for the pre pre super shows. And if you're an executive producer, uh, which you can also just listen to on discord as well. If you just want to get your ears tickled, then do you have, uh, do you have any cool stuff coming down the, the Patreon exclusive pike? How dare you? Uh, man, I got all the parts together. I, I posted that on Twitter earlier this week as I have the Ikea version of that damn net Jack video. I've been working on left and right. And uh, I'm, I don't like promising anything. I got to do the talky bits over it but i think it's in its last incarnation so if you've ever been curious about audio yp you know how we have everything tied together in the studio using not a ton of cables i even did a visual aid demonstration all that fun stuff uh stay tuned for that i i gotta feel like at least in the next week or two everything's going to be together and i'd like to invite anybody if you like physics platforming but it's really fast and happens to take place with wheels 
we do the Trackmania thing, man. Trackmania is a cheap game. It's like nine bucks when it's full price. It's almost never full price. Runs on a calculator. We load up new tracks. We got a Linux server that's running 24 7. But on Tuesdays, we put in 14 new tracks. We play them. We get good at them. And on Friday, we do a points match where you can win Vin Stein's Unredeemed Humble Keys. Because I got uh, 72 pages of it. And I loved giving away not only a documentary a couple of weeks ago, because I didn't know I had keys for a documentary. I thought that was well, hilarious. In, in, in indie game, the movie. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. I think Michael got it. Last week, I was able to hand out a shiny new copy of like PGA Tour Golf 2021. <laughs> oh, man, man. Is, is, is it the one where you can fight Tiger Woods' wife as Tiger Woods? I, I don't know, man. I was like, that's brilliant. And I think Alan won something. But yeah, we do it for fun. We do it to hang out. We have audio live in the After Shows and Voice Channel. It's just an excuse to play around. So we're not... There. Yeah. Yeah, it's screwing around. You can do some try-hard stuff, trying to get those points. And we have a thing set up to where if you're in like six or seventh place, you get bonus points to keep you in the game. So you don't have to finish first. You just don't want to be last. But yeah, thanks, everybody, for letting yeah, us uh, do this. Yeah, if you, uh, but uh, if you don't want more Trackmania shenanigans, you can maybe cover yourself in uh, Linux Gamecast apparel before you get hit by a motor vehicle. Uh, store out LinuxGamecast.com. Uh, go buy yourself some T-shirts, some stickers, some coffee cups. You know cups. what I need to pull the trigger on? What? The uh, Jordan Swag yoga pants. Oh, yeah. What, with my face on each butt cheek? Absolutely. Oh, no. A total leg print. So I'll have like all different stretched out. Well, not with my flat ass, but you get the idea. <laughs> right, 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 right. But but like a bunch of different Jordan faces, like yeah. like one of the, one of those Agao shirts, but right. just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and pants. I am into that. If you want to, if you want to sit on my face, tell Ben you want to see those. I gotta uh, check the Twitch terms because if I'm putting those on, I'm showing them off. Oh man, yeah, Twer- <laughs> twerk it, twerk it, baby. Right? We we got uh, we got wish lists as well. If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one. Ven has one for the studio. Pedro has one. Jill has one. Buy us some stuff off that, and you can send us a little note that we got to read live on the air. And if you send Ven some stuff, <laughs> you can take that coveted last spot on the glowing neon thingy behind Ven's head that it is blocked by Ven's head most of the time. You <laughs> hey, you could have a short name. <laughs> it's like six, seven characters at most. <laughs> no, you have, a, have a really long name. <laughs> have a really long name and make Ven write really, really small. You know, it's so an opportune know. time because you you can help build our little Linux powered studio and stay off camera for one, two, <laughs> yes. three, three. Once you get down to Linux Neuro, you're shit out of luck. Then people are going to see it in the uh, uh, at least until the credits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Thanks, everybody. Uh, it's a fun ride. Been doing this a long time. Still having a good time doing it. Did you ever think, it, like, when we started this at any point, we'd like Pedro would have a uh, Linux console that wasn't like a joke one off thing that an actual mainstream thing yeah. that a lot of people seem to want? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or that we'd, we'd be smashing proton buttons. I'm 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 just shocked from like the, the life transition where I went from literal mother's basement to mm-hmm. my own basement. Mm, and yeah. s- several several other locations <laughs> in between. Getting from there. To- uh, well, you know, I, yeah. I do the eras by Pedro's background. Mm, yeah, that, that, the, that, there that season like one, five season of two, season three. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's, it's it's the it's the cherry arc, right? Pedro's like uh, Pedro's evolved beyond like disliking moving. He's good at it now. It's like oh, I got this down. I know how it rolls. <laughs> and oh, I man, want I- to move again. This time, hopefully, to you know, big enough place to have stuff laid out more laptops uh, i mean, I mean <laughs> yes. you could you could, al- you could always move to toronto they have very reasonable house prices oh man one of the cheapest places <laughs> yeah i could move to london too <laughs> you know most expensive city in the world <laughs> ladies and gentlemen we are broadcasting on twitch so we need to talk about because you know what people play games people stream games and some of us happen to stream analytics games want to keep abreast of the news and this is something that went down this week is fuck you gizmodo <laughs> you, you you want you want to sign up for our newsletter man eat a bag of dicks <laughs> of at dicks i don't know <laughs> of, not, at, at dot dick. <laughs> twitch is reportedly considering cutting streamer pay okay what this really means is <laughs> they're going to get a different cut going from like 70 percent to 50 percent to which yes Clutch them pearls. Pank. I want a lot of pank, but it's not really an issue. My first thought from this was after reading that first, this is just like, I think they're, you know, 
Twitch is kind of floating this right now. I'm like, let's see what type of reaction we're going to get from this. <laughs> Which, this is a whole lot of Onos anyway, because like only a handful of streamers have negotiated something better than a like 50-50 or, you know, 60-40. Like that 70% number, that's, that's the top of the top, the elite of the elite. And on top of that, these people have work contracts with Twitch. They get paid directly. You know, got to stream this many hours. You see... Mm-hmm. Today was a good thing when I got home. I saw a bunch of my regular streamers that was like they just had a camera on. And they're like, "Yep, <clears throat> got to do uh, fill this hour in, and we got to do that." But I don't know. What do we think about this? Because another another thing that was floated in the scuttlebutt is getting loosening the exclusivity. Like even us as like a lowly peasants, we have a as an affiliate, we have a twenty four hour. Thing to, you know, we can't stream on multiple services at the same time, and we can't repost this video until like 24 hours later on another service. So once that goes away, I think what we're going to see, if that goes away, I should say, man, uh, everybody's going to be streaming everything. Well, I, I, but, I think what that, everything uh, because Mixer. YouTube has had gaming for a while, and that's not taken off. Only fans, <laughs> yeah, or not. <laughs> Odyssey? <laughs> yes, you can Twi- do Odyssey. Twitter, yes, yes, yes. Twitter <laughs> Facebook, those, those, those live streams still exist. Hey, man. Uh, uh, you know Facebook, what? yeah. There's Facebook? there's a lot of uh, uh, ad money on Facebook. Yes. Well, you can stream I, 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 Twitter, I, I, as we know, if you watch our pre-pre-super shows. We've attempted that on multiple occasions. We, we attempted that today. Yeah. Uh, no, that was because <laughs> we were trying to stream to Asia. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, but but yeah, like th- th- this this is just Twitch trying to make themselves seem more profitable by giving out less money and trying to like say trying to cushion that blow but to the streamers by saying like, "Hey, well at least you can go stream on other stuff now and go go get your money elsewhere." Well, yeah, like, that, I, dropping the exclusivity, that's very nice. That 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 is just good. Uh but I really thought that everyone on uh Twitch had the 50/50. Apparently not mm-hmm. no, not the case. <laughs> nope. Standard out of the box is 50/50. Even higher up people that we would consider like big streamers, streamers pulling in like 1 2000 concurrent. They're usually on 50/50. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, they also, everyone that I had heard talk about it, it's like, yeah, the Twitch just gets half. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're just kind of upfront about that. And it's like one thing with Twitch, like they, they double dip with like the bits, you know, and they come oh, yeah. with that and they get the half of that and they get that. They, they, they're they're, get the they're trying to do the uh, promotion thing too. So like mm-hmm. your users have to pay for your stream to get promoted. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a discoverability. I mean, I don't mind like something like that. Like if that mechanic is there and people want to like promote a stream that they like, because how many times, how many times, uh, like let, let's, for example, Kind of different, but along the same lines, like if I had the ability to spend some bits to get some extra publicity for the game we're reviewing this week, I would. Because I'm like, yeah. no one knows this is there. It has like 15 reviews, and this is a really number, good game. This is going to be number 16. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you got to think about uh, how many times have you run across a stream like in Suggested or anything on Twitch and have one view or two. You know, it's that stream that you're like, hey, what's this person up? They're like, oh, hello. They just stop with you. are like, um, awkward. Attention. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Zip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I want, I, lo- I want to watch a lot of woodworking. <laughs> so so, so we're, we're, we're set to lose millions of dollars from this, right? But- Not at all. Uh Probably not. Call us. Okay, Twitch. good. Because we don't have good, yeah. we don't have millions of dollars, so that's good. If it's gonna mess with anybody, I mean, one thing this is uh, like, if anything, like as soon as they start doing like this, they're giving away like the exclusivity. That's when things change a little bit because everybody there, there's really no harm if you're a large streamer to multicast everywhere. You know. Also, I, I think like to, to like to to Pedro's point, which is like, well, what's our what's our competition, right? Like, there's no point in like mm-hmm. making people be exclusive anymore. We've dominated the market right. for the gaming for like game streaming. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's Twitch or bust. Yeah. That's you got to go where the people are. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I go YouTube has been are. spending serious money to try to get people over to YouTube yeah. gaming, and they have, and they will spend however long. That deal was for, and they'll go back to Twitch. So I, I don't. Know. I, I wish they would spend some money to not change the the UI on the back end of YouTube because every time that <laughs> switches out, that's that's just miserable. 
It's the same in Google Cloud Platform. I've discovered that. <laughs> it's the same UI framework, and it's terrible. Terrible. Google Suite, same thing. People keep complaining about it, and they keep changing it. <laughs> Welcome to the world of streaming, where your choices are a turd and a shit sandwich. All right. Um. <laughs> I need a hero. Yeah. Uh, brand new, brand new uh, heroic uh, games launcher uh, beta is out, and it's got some cool stuff. This is twenty three dot beta one. Uh, there's a bunch of fixes for Windows, you know, because people use that <laughs> under Windows. Um, but hey, uh, what, one, one thing I do want to point out right off the bat, if you scroll down to the bottom of that article, they do shout out new contributors, which for an open source project is really, really nice. It's a good way to encourage people to contribute. You know, if you say, if you, you know, shout out the people who are getting started and getting involved in your product. Uh, just wanted to bring that up. But Cool things. Wine Tricks is now integrated, and also, if you've got any special file or uh, special characters in your file paths, uh, Heroic will now support them under Linux. So, home unaccounted for what the weird T that Pedro has will actually work. Surprise! Uh, no, see, on my the username on my system is just the regular uh, well, now <laughs> correct have, orientation now, T. Well, uh, now you now but, you can switch it over. That's, yes, that's fine. do it. Do, no, it, do I can, it right uh, now. Maintain brand accuracy on that one. Su- su- <laughs> pseudo user mod right now. Yeah, go. go. <laughs> but yeah, no. The the thing that jumped out at me was the white tricks integration. How was that not a thing from the start? Did you look at Lutris and go, yeah, they have all of that stuff. Oh, we're not gonna do it. No, it's it's fine. We don't need white tricks. Who wants to tinker with white tricks? It's kind of necessary. I, I don't care. It's wants, necessary. Wants, 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 wants is a strong word, right? <laughs> I, I, I will if I have it's to. Necessity. Yeah. I, I would start that project with once the bitching reaches critical mass, then, then I will start. <laughs> I, and, and I mean, like, if, uh, if, if, if Heroic is focused enough at just, like, getting the, the wine enhancements and wine uh, pref- or wine modifications necessary for Epic Games, yeah, may- maybe maybe if it's just handling that by itself without having to call wine tricks, that, that's fine. If they want but- to do that themselves and not give the user any chance to cock shit up, Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, well, now, now they don't. Now, now Wine Tricks is integrated, so you can cock shit yes. up to your heart's content. Well, let's talk about the Monster Smash. Not the, it was a graveyard <laughs> smash. Yeah. Um, Bau. Yeah. So, uh, War Smash mod engine. So I'm a. So the, this this is kind of interesting. It is a modding project uh, for lo- or it's a mod loader for Warcraft Three done in LibGDX. It replaces a good. It replaces some portion of the Warcraft 3 game. I'm not exactly sure what. When they give you a gameplay example, it just shows them running through a mission and not actually loading the mod. So I have no I saw I saw through that entire video. I'm like, are, are you gonna are you gonna Oh, excuse me, show me what's going on? No. But you can you can uh, set it up. It's pretty easy. Um although there is one problem. And the how to build, you have to manually extract and patch a jar, which is never something you want to tell people to do. Um, <laughs> it's relatively, it's relatively easy to do, but it's also hacky. You should, you know, fix your, your Gradle script so that it builds the thing properly. Uh, but maybe if you are someone interested in Warcraft remodding, you can be the person to submit that pull request. They do make a point. Out. Hopefully this process will become easier in the future. Yes. Hopefully. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you're used to like modding the Java version of Minecraft, that uh, opening up the jar is probably not news to you. But yeah, no, it's because uh, Warcraft, uh, Warcraft 3 didn't really have modding support built in. It was always like a community made effort. And much like all of those third party mod loaders for other games, this one is just trying to create a an easier way to, for you to load the mods to, you know, be the one uh, thing that everyone uses to load mods into Warcraft 3. It's it's XKCD 927, but, you know, <laughs> effort. <laughs> I mean, it's there. I mean, I remember uh, Warcraft 3 is one of the games that I believe ran on, like, this vanilla wine way back in the day, because I have memories of playing when i saw the video i'm like i think i messed around with that because what else did i have I had like myth 2 soul blotter that was about it so yeah even playing around with one if that's your jam man like preservation right absolutely and like 
Dota came out of the Warcraft 3 modding community, right? Like, there was, um, Blizzard used to be really, really good about including tools with their games that let you make content for them, and they, they stopped doing that when mm. Activision bought them mm-hmm. out. Maybe they surprised. were upset because they couldn't get their Bluetooth working under Linux. <laughs> no, or maybe they could, but it was all mono. <laughs> but yeah, it is, uh, that, that, that has been one of the issues uh, with getting Bluetooth headsets, the ones that have microphones in them, uh, to work. If you want stereo, the microphone doesn't work. And if you want to use the microphone, mono is all you're getting. What if I wear two headsets? Yeah, phone, phone quality <laughs> audio? Yeah, that's, that's always fun. Yeah, uh, uh, you could wear two headsets or do what I did, which is just use A2DP in the um, headset and use the microphone in the laptop to get around it. But uh, yeah, the fine folks at Calabra decided, you know what, let's tackle that particular issue. (laughs) I don't see what the problem is. (laughs) If my neck snaps, I'm suing you for the joke, that's pretty fucking heavy. Help, help, help me, Obi Wan <laughs> yeah. Kenobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> but yeah, the fine folks at Calabra, uh, Frederick Dennis, um, just wrote an article about uh, what exactly they have been trying to do with uh, wire plumb, wire plumbing uh, on. Um, Pipewire, and they bring up the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck is uh, obviously running Pipewire, uh, and what they've been trying to do with getting YouTube, uh, not YouTube, Bluetooth audio uh, certified. Bluetooth. For, yes. Bluetooth. <laughs> for the Steam Deck, and that kind of jumped out at me, and yeah, they actually go through the things. It's like, you, you can get your stereos with A2DPs, you can get your mono with HFP, and that's when the microphone works uh, and all of the other uh, protocols that are available now. And they are going to continue working on it to make sure that everything is properly implemented and Pipewire will be able to automatically negotiate everything with the help of a wire plumber. Mm. Yeah. That, um, I, uh, very I, nice. I've run into this in uh, Fedora because they're also running the some of the latest and greatest pipe wire as well. Uh, I use a pair of Bluetooth headphones on the TV box upstairs when I want to watch or listen to something that the girlfriend's not into and she just wants to like cross stitch or whatever. Uh, and I noticed when I was dicking around, yeah, all of these options are in Pavu control now. You can control the codex. You have yep. like the full the full uh, control of um, stereo, mono, and all that stuff, which is a drastic improvement over what we used to have, which was diddly shit. So you know, good on you, Calabra, right? It's good, it's very, good very nice. Yes. <laughs> now, now, maybe one day you can actually hear sound under Linux. No. <laughs> you have to install Windows 10 on your deck. Windows 11. And it only 11. works via Bluetooth. <laughs> Checkmate, atheists. <laughs> oh. So, one little piece of software that we use, uh, I think all of us have used it at some point. You might have used it yourself, speaking of Twitch. Story placement, Grandpa. This should have been after Twitch. It would have flowed better. Uh, OBS, Open Broadcaster. Now, we don't have much in the way of options for streaming. It's uh, X264, you got Vappy, all versions kind of the same thing. You might have been wondering, man, you can record with 265, HEVC, high efficiency, video codec. And I remember the first time I was doing some just task capture with using the NVENC encode for the high profile stuff, like looking at the file so I was like, it's broken, it didn't capture it. Like it's that drastic as far as the bit rate. Problem is, the problem is, is, uh, you know, HEVC, royalty bearing, unlike um, what Intel is going to be rolling out with ARC eventually, hopefully, before the heat death of the universe, AV1. Now, I think I talked about this maybe about two weeks ago. I've been watching the OBS project and the underpinnings for HEVC streaming are showing up. This is surprising because that question, type in, X265 OBS streaming on Google and look at like the years and years and years. Like, ah, uh-uh, we're not touching that. That'd be neat, but we're not touching it. Rightfully so. But if this this is in there, I mount the flag. I enabled it. Like the drop down menu is there, but other things, you know, might be 10 bit, 8 bit conversion with HDR, might need to get plugged in. And you can currently stream 265 HEVC to YouTube, not to Twitch. Anyway. Uh, this would drastically change. You really got to understand, drastically change the quality that you're able to stream at with that bit rate. You know, because saying 3,500, 4 megabits, you can absolutely do 1080p60 because you're not dealing with the blocking algorithm in 264 versus what 265 does. I'm not going to bore you with that. Look it up. 
Now, I remember saying, you know, when we were talking about this, I didn't dig into it too hard. I'm like, maybe they're doing some back-end stuff for Intel's AV1, because Intel has publicly said, hey, we're going to have AV1 encoding hardware built into our cards, which is a good thing, especially if you're a streamer, because it's always just been option A, NVIDIA. I can see a timeline here where NVIDIA's kind of shown up and they, they said, you know what, everybody at OBS? We're going to cover any uh, like licensing and paid in bits. Just here, let me slice you off a little bit of lawyers. There we go. Let's we'll slide that over there. Here's a nice little bag of money. And uh, let's get that 265 because we got to compete against AV1 all of a fuck mothering <laughs> sudden. We didn't, <laughs> didn't plan on that. Uh, this competition thing. Mm, hardware I, I mean, AV1. Mm, yes. <laughs> we don't have an Intel answer keeps, to that. <laughs> if Intel keeps pushing stuff back, though, they may not need to compete. That's the sad reality of it. Well, also true. But uh, I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited about this. Just um, not just for myself, but if you're in situations where you might only have three megabits up, you're going to be able to get a bitch in 720p. 60 stream all of a sudden where maybe they showed the comparisons with the uh, Elden Ring and yes you could see like the um artifacting from if you've ever tried to stream something with a lot of uh trees and a lot of vegetation it does that weird flickering artifacting and smearing as you're uh, going along and there's also the fact that NV encode hates foliage yes mm. <laughs> and our AV1 it was actually it, instead of doing that, it made everything a little blurrier, but there was no visible artifacting outside of the slight blurriness. That's very nice. Out of, out of, very curiosity, nice. What, <laughs> out of curiosity, what does this mean for UHD streaming? Is that going to like bump down to the realm of possibility now? or uh, uh, with like, Within reason, depending on what type of content that you're going to be pushing up. Probably like, not racing games with a lot of details flying by at uh, very high speeds. <laughs> like I would say for like 2160p, like the big thing with this is with HEVC, same with AVC1, uh, AV1, is that you can be able to do HDR, mm. streaming HDR. And for some so reason, you, people uh, So game, game of Thrones, darkness. Yeah, imprisoning you everywhere. <laughs> but like with uh, like NV encode, like X264, 2160p, if you're doing like medium motion at uh, 2160p, 60, you're probably going to need about mm, 24, 25 megabits up, mm. which not insane. No, it's, it's reasonable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's more of the ingesting server being able to take it. Yeah. <laughs> poor, poor little YouTube. No. Poor, all, poor little poor little Twitch, yeah. <laughs> this all hinges on Twitch. That's the part of the equation. Maybe somebody knows yeah. something I don't. Feel free to write into the show, leave a comment. Because like it I have to assume, like, because Intel is known for just showing up and like, boom, here's some money. Make this thing happen. Like to the point to where you don't even go, um, you just go Thank you, Intel. Done. <laughs> uh, oh, you wanted that? Yeah, we already started. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had this feeling. Yeah, 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 don't worry about it. <laughs> thank, thank, thanks for the donation. Uh, but I think we're going to see that with um, AV1 on Twitch. That would make sense to me. YouTube's just going to do it. I mean, Google's going to do it because fuck you or, you know. You no, the, tw Twitch uh, should absolutely do it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's uh, very exciting times if you are a streamer and keeping track of this stuff, because whether or not you know it, man, like if you got a 10, 20 or 30 series card, you got that hardware encoder built in on the NVIDIA side already sitting in your box. You just can't use it. I mean, you can for recording, just not stream. <laughs> there. I have All talked right. about the boring stuff, but I like boring stuff like that. All right. Well, coming up next, Drugs. Yeah, just drugs. Welcome back. It's time for your weekly scheduled DMT trip, a.k.a. the Chairquisition, where we take a game, run it on two very similar computers, and now one very, very different computer. Yeah, man, that's Thre Threadripper and 3060. That's like the old and the new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's some, some Merlin <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, but uh, we, we run it on our uh, different distributions, running very similar hardware, and we tell you what we think based on our hyper-specific, hyper-accurate lawn chair metric. Uh, it's delicious. You can, eyes. Yeah, Give you me can, all your you eyes. can use it. You can use it to measure all your drugs. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Leela Sky Arc done by Monolith Mines on the 
Psychedo engine for you can pick it up for about 15 bucks. What is it? Protect a psychedelic world from bizarre beasts and punishing bosses in this poetic mystery filled with secrets, puzzles, and music. And we got to thank uh, Graffiti Games, the publisher, for uh, sending us some keys over the Curator Connect. So let's get into this, Pedro. Tell us about Hipster Pixel Hyperlight Dark Souls. Yeah, it, it, it very much is. Uh, over here on both this uh, box with the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, now with 32 gigabytes of RAM, it launched out of the box. And on the Steam Deck, it also launched out of the box. It holds 60 on both, uh, but it's not a very smooth 60. Uh, if you're actually paying attention, there's a lot of variance in the speed at which your character moves, and it, it's based on the frame rate. There's a, a little bit of a frame pacing rubber banding happening. It's especially noticeable on the um, the Steam Deck. The DualShock 4 on this box, it works fine out of the box, but if you enable Steam Input, it doesn't. It stops working. But Steam Input works fine on the deck, so uh, again, there's a bit of disparity between the two um, Steam clients. But yes, the the the, the graphics are very uh, hipster pixely. It's, it's like a, less, uh, a slightly less audio-visually impressive Hyperlight Drifter. But when it comes to the fun, well, let me put it like this. Imagine a world where the entire progression is made by Dark Souls quest logic, or if you want to go back in time a bit more, Zelda quest logic. Uh, and by that I mean uh, guesswork deduction and blind ass fucking luck. Uh, that is Lila's way. Uh, but unlike Dark Souls, you actually have a map. Yes, there's arrows pointing where you need to go. There's little icons that indicate where the bosses are. It's um, it, it it's actually a quite a big help if you're a bit lost but the thing that got me was like the very intro to the game you get the uh, central ai it looks at lila and goes uh, oh you're the protagonist here let me open the gate so you can be on your way but i have questions i want to know things get off with you so off you go yeah it it doesn't really hold your hand, and there's plenty of Soulsborne references, and like the crow, it's just straight up lifted from uh, Dark Souls 2. Uh, but it it is a very well put together Metroidvania, which doesn't take itself incredibly seriously. It takes uh, it, it makes fun of itself quite a lot, and the whole dung beetle uh, thing near the beginning that was pretty good too. That actually inscribed in my mind just exactly what kind of game this was and i like it i like it a lot for hashtag hashtag wilhelm <laughs> scream that was a nice touch at the end oh like, right ah, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well uh, on uh, fedora 35 64 bit with the r9 3900x gtx 1080 ti this one also has 32 gigs of ram we're talking ram these days um not just out of the box hold 60 at uhd yeah the steam input fucks up but then it says oh well i'm not gonna steam input this and all of a sudden i'm back on dualshock 4 with native glyphs it's very nice um art styles definitely owes a nod type of life drift drifter but i feel it carves out a lot more of its own identity being more like overtly psychedelic than in 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 theme rather than just aesthetic. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter was very, uh, very um, aesthetically psychedelic, but it didn't really super lean into it that much. Um, that said, um, yeah, the I, the music is some FDL beep boops. It's not bad, but it's certainly not the standout feature of this game. The gameplay itself is, fun-wise, it's pretty freaking neat. I really do feel Monolith of Minds did a fantastic job of capturing the feeling and mystery that Legend of Zelda had. You know, you get dropped into this world, you got, like, it's dangerous to go alone, take this, and you gotta kind of figure it out from there. Uh, and everything is obtuse in that classic Zelda way, but not overly so, like the Dung Beetle mission here. Um, there's a logic that follows through with how you interact the with the game world. And once you figure that out, you start to realize, oh, really, I just, like, you start realizing, oh, all of these items have a purpose. If you can't use them as a weapon or, like, a buff, then you're collecting them because someone else wants them and you just need to throw it in front of them, uh, which is really cool. Um, like the Eyeball Lady, for example. Eyeball Lady just wants more eyeballs. I don't know. Give, give her the eyeballs. I also really like the Jacasian uh, design of the map. It's kind of like a giant spiral cinnamon roll that keeps opening up and giving you shortcuts to stuff, to places that you've already been to so you can traverse very easily. And it's very cool to like come to a place like, ah, this is clearly the exit. So I got to go find the entrance now and, and find, find my way back. It's, it's very cool. It adds to that sense of discovery. I think it does a very good job of like capturing the 
that, that, that sort of Zelda-esque desire to explore in a way that a lot of these games sort of fail to do so. Um, one thing I'm not a big fan of is the combat. Uh, it's, it's a lot of just, um, I think Pedro, you put it best. It's thro- throwing bombs in Zelda. And that was kind of the mm-hmm. my least favorite part of Zelda. Uh, you know, you could, there's not a lot of grinding you need to do for like the good uh, throwable stuff. Uh, there's, and there's usually enough, debris around that you should be fine but i'm also that person who never uses my potions because i might need them for the end of the game so that that part really doesn't gel with me i think this is a very good uh very good uh, effort it's very well done i'm gonna give it three chairs Boop. there we go three chairs from jordan's fine let me take that off Organization, kids. We're professionals <laughs> close your ten eyes year, ten years baby <laughs> ten years all right uh debian Debian 11, that's one ring on a Threadripper 1920X with a 3060. Yeah, it ran fine. I mean, it's even got a FPS counter built into it. But to what Pedro said, it's got every now and then you'll get like a little bit of a herky jerk, like when it's like transitioning between um, scenes, but it's nothing, nothing that's very jarring. Uh, out of the box, worked on my Xclone controller, no issues. Has a windowed mode. Happy to see that fun little soundtrack. I enjoyed it. It was well done, especially when you were racing the cat slug. <laughs> like it just clicked into like this country western bebop type thing and i was like oh all right that was kind of fun now the first thing i thought about this was oh look another hipster pixel top-down game leon but then i found out right out of the gate it's a bit cussy okay <laughs> and uh you know this is published by the same people who did turn up boys i'm like okay they're gonna put out some pretty decent stuff stab puppers narfoxes first thing you run into i'm like okay that's a fox with a narwhal horn or a unicorn horn i'm down i'll play then you have the cat slug lord that was interesting you legitimately get to pull off a meowschwitz with that i showed a screenshot of it and that that was hilarious well thought out boss and uh the game makes you think it really makes you think i mean nothing is spoon fed to you in this you know i haven't seen the drop off and have at mechanic executed this well in a little while you know and pedro you bring up the dung beetles that's a good example of figure it out fucko i like seeing that i like seeing that and i'm not gonna lie you know i was put off by the amount of backtracking that's on show like right at the beginning of the game but it turned out to be well executed as well i didn't feel like you know it was just added for extra time everything had a purpose combat to jordan's point it's serviceable i mean it does turn you into a pot hoarder immediately because you're just running around oh can i pick that up put it in my pack put it in my pack put it in my because you never know um think zelda minus the sword i think that's apt boss battles very fun i've been through three boss battles on this and um well designed well thought out boss battles engaging they will kick your ass uh, a little bit kick your ass light i should say just enough to (laughs) where you're gonna come back to finish it out of like, oh, fuck you. I, I can get through this. And that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, really, my own complaint is sometimes the color palette causes a bit of level blindness because I legitimately spent 30 minutes, 30 minutes trying to figure out how to invade a Sky Palace area when all I had to do was like hop over an exploded area of the map. Uh, thanks, YouTube Let's Plays. I found somebody who's like, fuck, really? That's all I had to do? I couldn't see it. Uh, it is a wee short, clocking in at around six, nine hours, according to the developers. I'm four hours in, having a good time with it, minus uh, the bullshit save system. Not a fan of that, uh, because you fuck up until you figure out how that works, and you're like, okay, it's good. And it's still a little extra walking. I will give um, this one an absolute finish. I'm going to play all the way through this, because it's real damn obvious. Something delightfully dark is going on. Hashtag letters to your dead mom and help. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three cheers. Gentlemen. Um it's good, yeah. It, it is. <laughs> this is why we do this. Because, you know, I was having, just to be perfectly honest, I remember the first time, and I bring, always bring this up as an example. It's like, why do you guys play so many dumb games? Because you run across the good ones. Like, one of the ones that we ran across, this showed up in much the way a little game you might have heard of called Hollow Knight showed up in our inbox. <laughs> like, oh, look, it's another, oh, what are you, like an Ann or some shit? All right, platformer. I'll try it out eventually. And we decided, oh, we're going to review it. So I installed it and like, whoa, this, even with Hollow Knight, to bring that back, the first time I went to the menu select, I, you know, went into the menu, into the settings, and it's made that sound. That told me right now, I was like, somebody put some care into this, just that one little sound. I had the same feeling with this, with the loading screen. When you see that, like, fading out, I'm like, somebody spent 
a lot of time for that one little thing, you know, kind of having like Akira vibes, how much work in the background has been done to make this. They did a good job with it. They did. I'm very happy and that this is it, a thing. On top of being well done, it, it manages to have fun with itself and with its references and cultural influences. Uh, it is genuinely a fun game to play. Uh, like the, the that last uh, dung beetle said, it's like there's plenty of shit in the world for everyone. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, Brain. before he before he died. <laughs> yeah, 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 that that happened. Um, no, I mean, I'd love to talk to the people, like the creative process that went behind, like what went behind um, telling this tale, because this is unique. This yeah. is unique, and I mean, it's pixel art, but I mean, it's beautiful pixel art. So yeah, no, uh, it's 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 very well done. Not not a low effort game by any stretch, and right, like, yeah. Did and either like, of you have those feels? So, like when you first saw it, you're like, "Ah, oh, it's gonna be a game maker game or something like that." Yeah, I, I, I mean, I kind, I kind of write all these like pixel games off because like sometimes, sometimes they're really good, uh, and sometimes they're not. I don't know. I think, I think I've learned not to, not to judge them too much, especially some of the the puzzle games we end up playing on this game or on mm-hmm. this uh, on this show, where mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. I, I would, you would think that it's complete trash, but like, no, it's good. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're looking for like that, that group that, opinion, the, that match three one that you had to like match three and then it oh, would yeah. move you in that and direction. Yeah. Oh no, no. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. Like that. It's like, this is, oh shit. This it's, is oh, challenging. Th- right. This actually works. This is, you make the puzzle of the progression, not just the thing that's stopping you from progressing. It's like, ha, ha, ha. so before yeah. we get out of here, this is <laughs> Leela's sky arc. It's available on steam. You can get it. I think it's also available on Nintendo switch criminally under reviewed on steam with only 10 yeah reviews. this needs more people yeah playing it. yep you will yep. have a good time with it hopefully some people see this yeah all right so coming up next how hard is it to get a gpu in 2022 it rhymes so it must be super easy right maybe for you That was surprising. That 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 was genuinely surprising. I I like when we have you know nice games that we can throw chairs at. That 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 makes it all worth it. This is why we Sometimes. can't have nice things, Pedro. <laughs> no, quite the opposite. This is why we only have nice things sometimes. Uh, but uh, I thought if you, you were going to be like give it a negative review because it wasn't Dark Soulsy enough. Uh, it, it, it did. It, did, it was did it leave straight a, up lifting entire things off of Dark Souls. So of course, what, I was going to give it a good review. What if it left a folder <laughs> in your home directory? Uh, that would have dinged it one share, so I would have given it the same score as you two did. Uh, the uh, best way to get in touch with us, if you have a diverging opinion from the game uh, and would like to throw your two cents in the ring, you can absolutely do that. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. But if you'd like to let us know, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. There's a form there you got to fill. LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your uh, hate mail into. uh, And uh, we will read it right here, right now. Uh, YouTube comments are also fair game and Patreon comments, of course, get priority. No, hang on. (laughs) YouTube, hang on. I had a right YouTube comment. Your ring. <laughs> if, you, if you like it, then you <laughs> should have put a wrong ring. on it. <laughs> Exclamation 11. Okay, there. That's a YouTube comment. There you go. <laughs> uh, this, this, this week's uh, hate mail, hate mail doesn't come from YouTube, though. Um, it comes from KJ Gaming. Uh, mm-hmm. They say, they say, uh, greeting, NVIDIA cards are still less expensive, <laughs> but the 6700 price looks good. What's the deal with, what's the deal with Ooh. AMD these days? <laughs> Works out of the box, less of hassle than NVIDIA. Does AMD better than NVIDIA now? What about Intel? I want Everything- that shirt. I want that shirt. <laughs> <Does> <laughs> AMD better than NVIDIA? NVIDIA. <laughs> yes. Uh, everything des- work- desktop works fine with my 1050 Ti, but games are rough, sad faced. Any help would be appreciated. You have an AMD card. I do. I have several. Well, I have, I have two. Um, yeah, AMD is pretty good out of the box. Uh, if you're running a relatively modern distribution, like a recent version of Ubuntu or uh, Arch or Manjaro or Fedora, then yeah, you have a recent version of Mesa and... There's no brand new AMD cards that don't work with those drivers. So yeah, you can just plug and play and be off to the races. How much are but the uh, 67? Too much. 
The 6700 XD here is 650 pounds, which is a big no-no. I, too, have been looking at them. (laughs) 528? That's kind of... I mean, okay. That's much better than here. (laughs) Better question. How does that compare to... What's the NVIDIA equivalent of that? Uh, Uh, Probably... probably Thirty sixty, thirty seventy ish. Thirty sixty Ti. Uh, yeah, it's between the thirty sixty Ti and the thirty seventy. Swear to that lens. Yeah, five hundred would be like kind of my feel on the max on that. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it, and the ten fifty Ti. Yes, it it, it is uh, for especially for DirectX twelve games. Uh, they don't like the Pascals at all. VKD three D running running into that, slamming into that brick wall too. It's not good. But yes, uh, AMD does in fact work out of the box. The the 6000 series, uh, since they are effectively very similar architecture RDNA2 as the 5000 series, you had support for that basically day one. They came out and they worked uh, with the Mesa drivers. Although, although, uh, to Vince's point from two segments ago, so long ago, (laughs) In, in the far distant past, <laughs> if you're going to be streaming, you may want to take a look at the NVIDIA option, if only for that uh, NV Inc. support, because otherwise you got to have a separate box and an APU if you want to have a crack at using AMD's built-in encoder. Or at least the 5900X to use uh, H.264 slow. <laughs> that I think that would always go, I mean, if you're looking for streaming, I'm pretty sure like anybody who does just the most basic search knows to stay away from AMD encoders. Uh, but what about Intel? Would we wait for uh, Intel? What, what about Intel, right? Here's the thing. <laughs> the, uh, to your question, this depends exactly on what type of person are you. Um, you know, you got a 1050, what was it, a 1050 Ti? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 1050 Ten, Ti. All right. You got something like that. That's not an antique. Okay, so I'd say maybe hold out and just kind of get a feel for where Intel's going. Uh, but, I mean, because, that, that, listen, I mean, that's going to last you another couple of months. But if you would, I'm like, well, I have a 970. I'm like, oh, you're that person. Well, I'm just going to wait until the next thing. And you've been saying that for nine years, right? You don't <laughs> strike rock, me as rock, that person. three and a half gigs. Dude, we all know that person. And we're like, well, I'm holding out. And I'm like, man, you've been holding out for half a decade. Come on. Come on. <laughs> so, it's, uh, Intel, they, they they made some, you know, very nice promises. Yeah, uh, they're, right now they're they're just promises though. So depending yeah. on how bad, how, depending on how badly you need it, yeah, it's up to you if you want to. Yeah, if you wanna like wait you, it out. absolutely. I mean, like if that card explodes, yeah, go ahead. I mean, five hundred bucks. I mean, that's as all depending on when you're at too. So or or if there if there's like real a bunch of games you really can't play because they're all DX12, then yeah, mm-hmm. you kind of got to look at moseying on elsewhere. Cyberpunk, uh, Elden Ring, um there's a couple others like those two are the big ones that are DX12 only. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And I brought it up, <laughs> I brought it up if you've been paying uh, attention to um the supply chain like what we have in stock right now that's going to be it for like once that is depleted and that's gone we're going to be in like another six to 12 month drought yep. so keep that in <laughs> mind too i mean i'm not trying to I do not panic buy like i would have not picked up a 3060 but i got it for 30 dollars over msrp so if you invite a deal like that jump on it if you get just write it. I mean, 1050T is not a bad card, man. I mean, no, it's, it's it, really not. <laughs> no, it, it, it'll it'll play most stuff. I like re- really the problem is yeah. If you want to play stuff at UHD on high, then yeah, you're gonna need a beefier card. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you you don't need to. Games still play identically if you bump them down to lower settings. 1050Ti for 1080p. Okay, newer games are probably gonna have to bring that down to medium, low. But you'll be able to play or, most everything. Or 7, 720p <laughs> with some FSR on or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. FSR, man. Write that FSR as long as you can. And uh, write us back. Let us know what it turns out. But we got to get out of here, everyone. So what do we do at that time? We cue the music. You can find this delightful educational children's show, family friendly, each and every week. <laughs> PBS, ABC <laughs> Family, yes. Uh, no, you can find us right back on Twitch, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, an hour beforehand for our patrons. You want to hop into the pre-pre-super shows and find out how some of this nonsense gets stuck together, how things are made, and other opinions usually revolving around, I don't know, pop culture and movies and shit. 
Is that fair? Uh, that, pretty much. That's yeah, pretty yep. close. The and nerd uh, crap. Yeah, nerd <laughs> shit. You want to get a hold of me? I'm on Twitter, uh, Vinstone, and we have a Mastodon because I know a lot of people are like, I'm leaving Twitter and I'm going to Mastodon. We got you covered, fam. If you want to join our instance, mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Barney the Dinosaur. I love you. You love me. Please don't send me any more restraining orders. I'm begging you, please follow my bullshit at Twitter, uh, at The Burning Fool, or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about restraining orders. I kind of restrain myself. I don't like people. <laughs> so uh, if you'd like to, you know, uh, commiserate my self-imposed loneliness, uh, Twitter, at unaccounted for, that, that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> tell, tell, tell him he's pretty. <laughs> or, you know, don't. <laughs> Pedro's is like, would you install me? Yeah, <laughs> Every, everyone at unaccounted for and tell him he's so pretty. Oh, let's roll some credits. <laughs> People might ask questions. <laughs> Yakety sacks at the end, more like it. We gotta thank the lovely people who are making this possible. Our advisors, Omega Star Theron, our executive producers, Aldius Bob Ram, Scott Mashud, Atomic Cast, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku Yorge, and Tomaz, and our little Nicky fans, Darkwing and Abstraction, aka Nixon's Pyramid. Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Tragi, Veritanuda, Justin Frostclaw, Strider, Nubbin, and David. With the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, System T, Craig, Renee, Luna, I skipped the line. I don't care. Don't worry, it's fucking great. He was in I'm standing cat of Bye. Hey, you guys are all back here. You're awesome, guys and gals. Carl. Dynafire, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>